Let's go to the bottom of the first inning in a scoreless game as the Boulders try to finish a three-game series sweep. Jack Sundberg, who sat out a game for the first time this season, will lead things off. Zach Kirtley and Tucker Nathans to follow against right-hander Jalen Miller Sr., who is making his first start at the Frontier League level. Didn't start any games in his summer with the Chicago Dogs and River City Rascals in 2019. Did make 13 starts three years ago for the Vallejo Admirals of the Pacific Association. And also had a handful of starts in the United Shore Professional Baseball League in the summer of 2016. There's a fast strike in Sunberg Ahead in the count now, two and one. Jack's hitting 299 on the year, two home runs, 28 RBIs, went 0 for 4 in the 6 4 Boulders win on Tuesday. Batting left against the righty Miller. Fastball at the knees, two and two. Sunberg is in an 0 for 7 slump over his last two games. Miller works from a full windup. 2 2 pitch. Fastball low. Cranking it up in the low to mid 90s. We will set the Miners defense for you, presented by Budweiser. After this next pitch from Miller to Sunberg. A payoff pitch. Breaking ball fouled left side. That'll go out of play. Infield first to third, Audi Siriaco, Jackie Urbias, Cito Culver, and Ramsey Romano. The outfield from left to right, Trevin Escara, Chuck Taylor, and Juan Kelly with Ronnie Allen Jr. behind the plate. Another 3-2 and another foul back, this time behind the plate to the sweet level over the screen. Boulder's Power Report presented by Polaris Healthcare. Polaris Healthcare, your care, our mission. Get you those details right after this. Another 3 2 to Sunberg. Swung on line to center field right at Taylor. He backs up a step and makes the grab with the glove on the right hand for out number one. Boulder started the series with 69 home runs, tied for first in the league with Tri City. They got two big flies on Tuesday, courtesy of Ryan Ramiz and Phil Capra. Another one in the first game today, Ray Hernandez with his 20th of the year. So the Boulders up to 72 big flies on the season. First pitch swinging is Kirtley, and he flies it out to right field, almost in his tracks. Juan Kelly makes the catch for out number two. Currently now two for seven in the series. Came in hitting 273 with 11 home runs and 44 RBIs. Tucker Nathans is 0 for eight in the series. Pair of 0 for fours, 268 average, eight home runs, 28 RBIs. Trying to shake off the rust after he missed a week because of illness. Takes low from Miller. And it's one and oh. The lights are on. They are taking full effect as the sun begins to set. There's a fastball at the knees called a strike by Ruben Ramirez. Again, John Lamatina, the umpire at first base, Mel Chatham at third. The one one from Miller. Swung on fouled back to the screen. And Miller ahead of Nathan's one and two. 323 down the left field line, 408 to the left center field power alley, 403 feet to dead center. But there is that nearly 40 foot high wall and it's 312 down the right field line to the short porch. Uh, soft line drive, backhanded at second base by Urbias. That retires Nathans and the Boulders here in the first. Three up, three down, we go to the top of the second. It's New York nothing.
Here's the birthday boy, Kevante Mitchell, leading off the home second. He takes a strike from Jalen Miller Sr. Mitchell, three for eight in the series. He went one for four in the opening game. Turned 26 today. Ray Hernandez has a birthday next Thursday. Swing and a miss over the top of a good breaking ball from Miller. Doing a nice job of changing speeds. He went from 94 with a fastball to 82 there. And it's 0-2 on Cavante. Ray Hernandez and then Ryan Ramiz to follow. Swing and a miss. It gets away, albeit temporarily from Allen. He scoops it up and tags Mitchell out. Cavante didn't realize that the ball had gotten away. First strikeout of the night for Miller. And that is now 21 of the last 22 Boulders batters retired. Mitchell came in hitting 281, seven home runs, 45 RBIs. Hernandez, 249, 20 home runs, leading the Frontier League, 47 ribbies. And he pops this one up toward the Boulder dugout, giving Chase Allen, but it'll go over the netting and into the seats. First couple of rows behind the dugout. Hernandez, one for four in the opener with that home run. Now one for eight in the series. Boulder scored two runs in the second inning right after we resumed last night's suspended game. They added three in the third, but since then have only had one base runner. The 0-1 fastball low from Miller to Hernandez. That was at 95 miles an hour. Miller can bring it. 1-1, a breaking ball inside. He can bring it, but he hasn't brought it in much volume. Mentioned he's making his first start in 34 appearances. That misses down and in, 3-1, and one, Hernandez ahead. Jose Abreu hit one into the cornfield at the Field of Dreams game. Off of Andrew Heaney in the first inning. White Sox lead the Yankees 1-0. Now in the second. Fastball outside. And Hernandez draws the one-out walk. First Boulders base runner since John Martellini singled with two outs in the fifth inning a few hours ago. Here's Ryan Ramiz batting 287 with five home runs, 33 RBIs. Took an 0 for 4 collar earlier today. He's 1 for 8 in the series. But Ramiz, star of the game on Tuesday with the go-ahead two-run homer. Beyond the flagpoles in right center field. Takes outside 1-0 and, and all of a sudden Miller has lost the strike zone. Ryan should be taking all the way here. The 1-0, swing and a miss. And a letter high heater, one and one. Fans, the Boulders and Clover, proud to celebrate our country's heroes. All active service men, women, and veterans get one free ticket at the PCU Park box office with identification. Hernandez leading off first, has stolen five bases in six tries this year, held on by Siriaco. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball misses, 2-1 and one on Ramiz. Lights have taken full effect here on Latin Heritage Night. Two one from Miller, swung on, popped up, left side of the infield. The third baseman Romano calling for it near the foul line, makes the catch for out number two. And here comes Marcus Mastroboni playing in his 17th game for the Boulders. He's hitting 327 with three home runs, 11 RBIs. Did not play on Tuesday. More than made up for it by going two for four 
with a couple of singles and a pair of runs scored in the opening game of what became a doubleheader. First game, nine innings. This one's scheduled for seven. Throw to first. They've got him picked off. Hernandez was leaning the wrong way. And Ray is picked off. 1-3 to retire the side. No run. Boulder's trying to come back from a run down. Marcus Mastroboni, Phil Caulfield, and Phil Capper. 7-8-9 due up here against Jalen Miller Sr. And a fastball is in for a strike to Mastro, who went two for four in the opening game. He was at the plate when Ray Hernandez got picked off to end the bottom of the second. I'm Mark Renee. Joe Allen is alongside on this charity celebration night here at the ballpark. The 0-1. Down and away. So I wanted to talk to you after yeah. you were finished buttering me up. And I, again, I really, you know how much I appreciate the kind words. Um, I thought of you and folks who follow me on social media know that I immediately thought of you during the opening ceremony of the Summer Olympics in Tokyo because they finally, after all these years, acknowledged what happened to the Israeli Olympic team in Munich in 1972. And I know that that had been a cause very near and dear to your heart was getting that moment to actually happen. Well, it was 49 years in the making, and it was 49 years, um, actually 45 years, since the first Olympics after 1972 that uh, the I International Olympic Committee rejected any uh, uh, mention of the Munich 11. And it stayed that way for... Long drive, deep left field. The park won't hold that one. It is gone and it ain't coming back. Marcus Mastroboni with a fireworks extravaganza, <laughs> boulder blast, a solo shot leading off the third. And we are tied at one. It's a lot of home runs out of this team. Man. It's funny, I remember coming into the booth right around Father's Day. And the Boulders had, I want to say, maybe 30 home runs. And they have just, as the weather heated up, the bats have heated up, and it has been a home run barrage. Second of the day, fourth of the series. And this was another one that left no doubt. Master Borny with his fourth big fly and his 12th RBI. Here's Phil Caulfield, he takes a ball. Caulfield batting 221 with a home run in 10 RBIs. Two for four in the opener, three for six in the series. You know, Mark, uh, Olympic after Olympic after Olympics, um, the Widows. That's popped straight up near home plate. Tossing away the mask is Allen coming down Syriaco, and nobody gets it. It falls out of play. Allen apparently held, heard the footsteps from Adi Siriaco, and we'll see if they score that an error prolonging the at bat. Nothing on the board yet. This could be one of those situations where unless Caulfield reaches base, they won't give an error. That's happened before. Anyway, back to your okay, back very important story, and yep. I apologize for it. No, that's okay. That's quite all right. It's, uh, it's your show, and it's the boulder, so we have to... Uh, it's Back over our heads. Over the so the the widows of the uh, Olympic team that had been murdered on their own dime, you know, their own money, went to every single Olympics to uh, cajole, to lobby, to beg the International Olympic Committee to remember their their husbands, sons, fathers, brothers, and each time they were said they were told no. And then in Vancouver, they were told no again. I know Vancouver was a winter game, but in that winter game, um, a luge athlete was killed on a... Uh, right, there's a drive out to right. That'll stay in the park. Kelly moving toward the foul pole makes the catch. And that is the first out of the inning. They actually did give an error to the first baseman, Siriaco. So the pause was to decide who the error should be on. So in Vancouver, uh, the luge athlete from Georgia. Um, the Republic of Georgia. Repu right. Um, 
crashed into uh, the wall in the training accident and lost his life. Yeah, I remember that. And that night, they did a minute of silence for him at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. Capra, at that check, swing, strike. At that point, it was clear that there was uh, a reason other, other than we don't want to bring everybody's head down by having a sad minute of silence, so they didn't do it. And uh, the j local JCC in Rockland County in 2010 began to take this fight up, and they worked closely with the families, and we went to London in 2012 to lobby the International Olympic Committee to no avail. Popped up again on the infield. Miller coming over toward foul ground. The third baseman Romano calls him off. <coughs> and that is the second out. I think the Miners lost track. I see them all coming off the field, and yeah. I'm looking at my scorecard and at the scoreboard, and I'm saying, uh, guys, that's only two out. Well, before, before they get the third out, um, <laughs> Then, a after being turned down for, for so often, now comes Tokyo. Didn't take place last year. It did take place this year. We had no knowledge in advance, but the widows were in the, in the arena, uh, guests of Thomas Bach, the, the uh, Olympic president. Sundberg fouls it back, third base side out of play. So it kind of felt there was something up, and then... And then uh, they did a very nice, very dignified, uh, very heartfelt uh, minute it of really silence. It really was. It really, I, I got to tip my hat to the Olympic organizers. They did a great job. After, after not doing anything for so long, they did a very nice job. And you know, the funny thing is, Mark, if they would have done this in Montreal in 1976, it would have been over. Yep. Would have been over. All Isn't that always the case, though? Yeah, yeah. You just prolong it, and it only makes it worse. Yep. And people grow more resentful and more hurt, and it was just completely unnecessary. But I, I was so taken that it finally happened, and I didn't know. I, you know, my excitement was to reach out to you yeah. and say, "Are you?" Of course, I knew you were watching, but did you see what just happened in Tokyo? Um, and and. Again, my first thought was of you and obviously of the of the Munich 11. And, and finally, you well, know, the, I, the... I had done a documentary on, on the JCC's effort right. to uh, work with the families of Munich. And, and uh, that, you know, it was a sad documentary in that it's a sad topic, but also that for years and years and years, almost 50 years, it was never acknowledged. Uh, now it has been acknowledged, so it's really a feeling of redemption. Not not so much for for me. I was a storyteller, right. but uh, I imagine. I mean, uh, my friends Anki Spitzer and Alana Romano, and David Kirschdell from the JCC, and these are people who really put everything into this. So to see it come through, and to get the text from Anki moments later, tears in her eyes was was amazing. Sunberg putting up a good battle here. He fouls another one off over the roof on the third base side. So, Mark, tell me a little bit about uh, where we're headed in the, the latter part of the season here with the Boulders. It's going to be a fight to the finish, fight my to the friend. Finish, yeah. Two games out starting this one. There's nothing better than a pennant race. No, know? listen, it doesn't matter what level. Know, and we had the I new know. city uh, Little League 10-year-old yes. All-Stars here before the game celebrating their <laughs> championship. Here's another payoff pitch to Sunberg. Swing and a miss. And the side is retired. Listen, this has been a blast. I appreciate you coming by. Thank Thanks, you Mark. for all the work. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth in a 1-1 game and leading things off, Zach Kirtley. He falls behind 0-1. Jalen Miller Sr. still in there for the Miners. He's given up just one hit. That was the solo homer to Marcus Mastroboni leading off the third. Breaking ball to Kirtley is... Down low, one and one. Zach, two for seven now in the series. Sky to right, his first time up.
The 1-1 fastball drilled to left field. Backing up is Scarra in front of the warning track, actually on the warning track, as his momentum carried him to a couple of steps in front of the wall. He makes the catch for out number one. Screaming line drive off the bat of Kirtley. But it's a loud first out here in the home fourth. Boulder's baseball sponsored by Dominican College for a quality education in a small college setting. Consider Dominican College. You can learn more by visiting dc.edu. Here's Tucker Nathans. Lined out to second base. He's 0 for 9 in the series. Fouls it back to the screen for 0 and 1. Nathans came into this evening's contest at 268 on the year. Eight home runs, 28 RBIs. Aaron Judge, a three-run homer for the Yankees. Into the corn stalks in the top of the third. Gave them a 3-1 lead. Foul tip. That caught the mask of Ronnie Allen. He's trying to shake it off. Ruben Ramirez, the home plate up, walks the new ball out to Jalen Miller Sr. So we've got a senior pitching and a junior catching. Tim Anderson just doubled to score another Chicago run. So it's three to two in the bottom of the third as they play the Field of Dreams game. Andrew Heaney on the mound for the Yanks. Lance Lynn pitching for Chicago. Boulder's bullpen up and running again. 0-2, ground ball past the diving Siriaco at first and onto the bullpen mound in the right field corner. Nathan's turning second. He will head for third. The relay throw coming late and it gets past Romano. But it's backed up beautifully. By the left fielder is Scarra. Wow, he came from nowhere. If he wasn't there, Nathans would have been able to score a little league home run. As it is, a one out triple for Tucker. And the Boulders have the go ahead run 90 feet away for Cavante Mitchell. The birthday boy, three for nine now in the series. He struck out his first time up tonight in the second inning. Well, the Yanks lead 3-2 as they play the bottom of the third out in Dyersville, Iowa. Breaking ball misses to Mitchell. I believe it's Alexander who's warming up. Swing and a miss, and Kevante trying to make it a 3-1 game. Ground ball could give the Boulders the lead. Nathan's leading from third. The infield is pulled in with the exception of Romano at third. Swing and a miss, and Kevante behind in the count, one and two. Pretty sure I saw Nathan Alexander throwing in the bullpen. So first, second, and third pulled in. Romano playing behind the bag at third. One, two pitch. Breaking ball is foul tipped. Mitchell just got a piece. Fastball swung on, eye high, and Mitchell misses. That is the third strikeout for Miller. Second time he's gotten Cavante. The triple for Nathans, by the way, his first of the season. And here's Senor Quadrangular Ray Hernandez walked his first time up 
in this game. His only hit today and his only hit in the series was the home run in the opener. And he has the tower buzzed up and in by Miller at 94 miles an hour. The 0-1 swung on, popped up on the infield near second base. Urbaez finds it, and as he drifts onto the outfield grass, he makes the catch, and that retires the side. No runs. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning in a game scheduled for seven as the Boulders try to complete a three-game sweep of Sussex County. Ryan Ramiz, Marcus Mastroboni, and Phil Caulfield. Six, seven, and eight coming up against Jalen Miller Sr. His first pitch, a fastball fouled back behind the plate and over the roof for 0 and 1. Each team with a run on only two hits. And we thought this would be a bullpen game, but it's been a bullpen not needed game. Here's the 0 1 on the corner. 0 and 2 to Ramiz, who popped out to third back in the second inning. He's 1 for 9 now in the series and 0 for 5 on the day. And the 0-2 coming from Miller. Fouled again over the roof. And the count will hold. So Jalen Miller Sr. is over 60 pitches at 62. And James Mulry right around the same for New York. 0-2 fastball high. 1-2. on Ramiz, and the throw back from the catcher, Allen, over the head of Miller, who flagged it down like a wide receiver getting under a touchdown pass, and in fact, when he caught it, put both arms up in touchdown signal mode, and then looked at Audie Siriaco, and Siriaco returned it. Touchdown, Miller. It's now two and two on Mulry. If you can't have fun playing baseball, you can't have fun anywhere. That's my credo. 2-2 two -two pitch on the ground to Siriaco. He gobbles it up and takes it to the bag himself for the unassisted put out. One up, one down here in the fifth. The New York Boulders are the premier sports and entertainment destination in suburban New York City, offering partnerships to help brand local, regional, and national businesses. For more information, just call 845-364-00. 0-9. Marcus Mastroboni, two for four in the first game after not playing on Tuesday and only playing one of the three games over the weekend. His home run leading off the third is the only Boulders run in this game, and he takes a fast strike from Miller. It's one and, I beg your pardon, 0-1. Oh Mastroboni now with four home runs and 12 RBIs in 2021. His batting average at 339. He's only playing in his 17th game, so he's a long way from qualifying for the league lead in hitting as he takes a ball for one and one. Bullpens remain quiet. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Fouled over the roof. Actually off the facing of the roof behind home plate, and it's one and two on Mastro. Twenty-seven-year-old from Livermore, California. The one-two from Miller. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike three. Fourth strikeout of the night for Miller. Matching Mulry's total. Boulder's only two hits. The home run by Mastro in the third, and Tucker Nathan's one-out triple in the fourth their only other base runner was ray hernandez who walked with one out in the second but was picked off to end that frame and we mentioned the boulders at the end of game one at 17 of their last 18 retired after they scored their five runs back in the second and third innings here's phil caulfield 0 for one in this game three for seven in the series
and Miller just threw his 70th pitch. The 1 0, Caulfield takes 2 0. Boulders looking for their fourth win in a row and ninth in 11. The Miners have lost seven straight. That's their third longest losing streak in franchise history. 2 0 pitch, fastball at the letters. In for a strike, 2-1. 2016, Sussex County lost eight in a row and also had a 10-game losing streak. Those are the only two slides longer than this seven-game free fall they're on now. And in spite of it, they still lead the Northeast Division of the Frontier League. 2-1 is skied, foul toward the Boulder dugout. Siriaco giving chase, so to Miller and the catcher, Allen, but it's into the netting on top of the boulders dugout and we'll do it again so Caulfield has new life he hit a pop-up his last time up in foul territory much like that one but eminently more playable Allen and Siriaco came together neither of them caught it and initially there was an error given to Siriaco but then it was taken away because it would have been a tough play for either guy. Here's the 2-2. Check swing out to left field. Backing up is Scarra near the foul line. He makes the catch and his momentum takes him to the wall in front of the bridge bar. Side retired. Three up, three down again for New York. And as we go to the top of the sixth inning, it's the Miners one and the